Thank you. As Shakespeare said, what joy hath thy fair welcome brought? <laughs> All right, actually, Shakespeare didn't say that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to attract Ted Koppel's viewers, so I just throw that in. <laughs> Eddie, do you want to adjust the microphone for me? <laughs> good to see you. Boy, you're in a good mood tonight. They, they always come back. Mr. DeCordova always comes backstage just before the show and says, hey, great crowd tonight. Or sometimes, you're on your own. <laughs> tonight. This is, uh, I guess this is the first live show we've done since yep. the inauguration. Yep. You see, Bush has now been president for 13 days, and you don't understand, this is a very difficult time for comedians. Uh, <laughs> no, it's right after the inauguration, and it's before he's had any time to do something really goofy. <laughs> but, but it won't be long, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. A, a kinder, gentler audience. Uh, <laughs> if you've been watching the president on television, you know that he has a very severe head cold and yeah. laryngitis. He made a speech the other day. You could hardly hear him. You have to read his lips now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's got a severe cold, but they gave him a new miracle cure, which scares your cold away. It's called NyQuil. <laughs> So far, Bush is making all the right moves. Did you see that in Washington, he actually stopped his limousine at a traffic light? You know, just to try to be an ordinary guy, and uh, they're going to, they want to go out to eat at a restaurant, and he went aboard this aircraft carrier, and rather than going to the wardroom and sitting with the officers, Bush wants to be one of the guys, you know, went into the, the mess hall with the sailors and actually ate the chow that the regular guys do. But Bush, you see, tried to fit in. He actually ordered angel hair pasta on a shingle. <laughs> it just <laughs> didn't cut it. And according to CBS News, our new president likes to play practical jokes, including, I'm not making this up, the joy buzzer. I'm, remember the joy buzzer? And a whoopee cushion. <laughs> I understand the other day he pulled a good one. He got on a, a hotline, the red phone, called Gorbachev, asked him if he had Prince Albert in a can. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Gorbachev, did you see in the paper today they, the Russians announced what he gets per year as a salary? I would have thought it would have been something like our president makes, yeah. what, a couple hundred thousand yeah. dollars? He makes $28,000 a year. I've got an ex-cat that makes more than that. <laughs> Those tender fiddles add up real fast. Uh, I think it's kind of sad. To make ends meet, Gorbachev has a second job. He's the night manager at the Moscow AMPM store. Did you know that? <laughs> well, let's see, what else? One nice thing about being a, a comic, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is you can always depend on the ministry to, uh... <laughs> what do you think I am, a butcher? What is this? <laughs> you can always depend on the evangelist to bring you material. Jimmy Swaggart is in the news again. He is suing Penthouse Magazine. They printed an article saying that he was involved with a, a, a stripogram performer. Swaggart denies the charge, although he did admit he once got a pick-me-up bouquet from Merlin Olson. <laughs> and Swaggart... <laughs> Swaggart now says, if from now on, anybody who reports that he was involved in sexual activity with somebody will have to furnish proof Preferably videotapes. Uh, <laughs> but he will accept really clear Polaroids. <laughs> Who knows? Did you see what Mrs. Swaggart said? Mrs. Swaggart said they should leave that kind of trash on the newsstands, I guess referring to Penthouse Magazine, and instead send the money to, money to the Jimmy Swaggart ministry. It's an interesting biblical interpretation, isn't it? Uh, not only do I have to pay for my own sins, I've got to shell out cold cash for his. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough of that. Thank you tonight. Going to a teen hop tonight? <laughs> Man's getting sent out trying to dress like Ken and Barbie. You know. 
What else is going on? Oliver North's in the news again. They are starting the jury trial. One of the main problems I have, they're trying to find 12 people on the jury who have never heard of the Iran-Contra scandal. <laughs> and so far, they've only come up with George Bush. I guess they dropped a couple of the big charges against North, right? The strongest charge he faces now, I think, is illegally parking his uh, station wagon in a red zone. <laughs> so he may get off. Red zone. Uh, what did I say, the red zone? <laughs> what, did I say redstone? Redstone, red zone, makes no difference. <laughs> Sometimes I do that so the audience can fill in the blanks and make up their own jokes. <laughs> Are you going to the official Reagan party? Have you been invited? Of course. Are you really? Of course. Didn't you get your invitation, John? Prob probably in the mail. <laughs> You'll probably fax it to me. <laughs> well, I read in the paper today, the official welcome home to the party for the Reagans is going to be given by Mufak Al Madani. <laughs> Mufak Al Madani, reported to be one of the richest men, I guess, in Beverly Hills. Never heard of According to the paper today, Reagan says he never heard of him before, but when he saw his bank account, he became one of his very close friends. <laughs> uh, are you really going to that? Yes, sir. Oh. Did you get an invitation? No. Oh. Everybody. <laughs> According to the paper, the party is going to be held in a, a tent that will recreate France. <laughs> now, I don't get invited to stuff like that. I went to a party once. It was a pup tent that recreated Pacoima. <laughs> I'm going to kind of miss the Reagans, though. But he may not be out of politics yet. Did you know that? I understand he's going to oppose Sonny Bono for mayor of Palm Springs. <laughs> Well, folks, tomorrow, if you haven't read, the ultimate television show, right up there with Masterpiece Theater and Nova, Geraldo Rivera's Full Frontal Talk Show. Have you read it in the paper? Yeah. I can't believe... It is ratings weeks, is it not? Yeah. Geraldo Rivera is doing, apparently, and I've seen an excerpt of it, a nude show with members of the audience, nude, the participants, nude, now, I saw an advanced copy of that, and the only time I've seen that many people standing around naked, it involved the word cough. <laughs> That's supposed to be tomorrow. It's catching on. First, didn't they do some nude stuff on L.A. Law? Yeah, and in an upcoming episode of Beauty and the Beast, I understand that Catherine uh, takes an Arelco shaver to Vincent. <laughs> Phil Donahue got so jealous over Geraldo's show that he had all of his skirts shortened. Did you know that? <laughs> well, what else is news? How about the thing they're floating around from the government that charges 25 cents to bail out the savings and loans? They're suggesting maybe the depositors should pay 25 cents for each $100 you have in a savings and loan. Isn't that nice? I have a better idea. Let's let the new congressman each pay 25 cents for each additional $100 in pay raise. Okay. One final item. This was in the paper today. I don't know, I make it up. A study from the National Institute of Health said that virile men are more prone to illness. <laughs> Shame on me. What a... What a cheap way to get a laugh, but we don't care, do we? <laughs> You're in a grand mood tonight. We got a great show. We have a very funny man here tonight, Mr. Martin Short. Martin Short. <laughs> I love you. I love you. A lovely young actress, Isabel Rossellini, is with us tonight. Yeah. And this is. And if you don't think we have a completely rounded show tonight, folks, we have a gentleman by the name of Gene Fleming from Hastings, Nebraska. <laughs> and his goose, Andy. <laughs> and now you say, well, that's right, folks. So stay where you are. Do a few
Cheers. <laughs> Woo, what a house. We are back. You were out skiing the past yes, few days? Yes, trying to ski. I've never done that before? No, that's a tough sport. Uh, how are you? Are you on the uh, big slope yet? No, no, I'm on the little <laughs> baby slope for babies and cowards. <laughs> Tell me you were not in Alaska. No, I was not in Alaska. I know Sun Valley. I know you're all aware what the temperature was oh. in Alaska. Was it let 86? Me, let me put it in proper perspective. The difference in temperature between Los Angeles and Alaska the day before yesterday was 160 degrees. If you left here, it was 80 degrees. Right. If you went up into Alaska, it was 86 below zero in one location. Oh. Woo! What happens there? I guess I everything know. stops. That's right. <laughs> anyway, did you ever read something in the paper that just uh, kind of kind of ruins your day? Yeah. Well, I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, Geraldo Rivera, I mentioned, but never thought I'd see the day when we'd be plugging Geraldo Rivera on this show. <laughs> but apparently, Geraldo has cracked, finally, right. under the pressure. Right. And uh, tomorrow, he is doing a show on nudists. His guests will be nude, and Geraldo, it says, and his audience will be partially nude. Mm. I guess that they'll have strategic coverings, I suppose, because yes. I don't think you can do, actually, full frontal nudity. Well, as much as we hate and detest this kind of crass <laughs> commercialism and doing anything for ratings, which we, we have to go along with right. it. You've got to jump into the party here, folks. <laughs> we, we tonight, we tonight had, had scheduled an all-nude show before Geraldo. <laughs> we decided to go one step further. We were going to do a show completely nude with the band, all yeah. of us, even the studio audience. Then we picked up this morning's Herald Examiner. And believe it or not, I'm not making this up, Burbank does not have a law, or did not, they found out, banning nudity. Apparently due to an oversight, they found out they caught a streaker last November. The guy was running through an alley, nude. The police caught him. They brought him in. They had to let him go because there was nothing... Mm on the law books in Burbank <laughs> that prohibited you from running through the streets <laughs> nude. Maybe it's because of the people who live here or something. <laughs> it's illegal. It's, uh, it's, it wasn't illegal to sunbathe nude in the Burbank Park as long as you aren't lewd about it. Ooh. Well, being nude yourself is not being lewd. Well, folks, what happened, this has ruined, of course, our entire show. Those of you who just tuned in, we already had 500 people in our Sudi audience nude. They were, yes. But, but we found out, we found out late this afternoon we might be in trouble with the law because they, apparently they're getting this law through that bans nudity. Yeah. So at the last minute, right. Jeff Sotsing of our staff, yeah. loyal Jeff, ran out and bought 500 pairs of pajamas <laughs> to clothe this studio audience. Now, right. It, it's ruined our show. Uh, if you think we're kidding, uh, Bob, turn on the lights and let the people at home take a picture of our studio audience dressed in their jammies. Now you see? You see? Look at you. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there they are, folks. Well, folks, that's... I appreciate <laughs> That's Gene, our spotlight man. Now, that's revolting. Gene gets... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well... I don't want to say that this is such a nice audience, but this looks like the world's dullest orgy, doesn't it? I mean, I... <laughs> now, by the way, folks, since we popped for these pajamas, we want you to take them home as a memento. Okay. So we said, since we can't do that, what can we do to make up for not doing an all-nude show? Well, some years ago, some members of our staff did, as, as other celebrities have done, posed nude for some magazines. <laughs> so we dug out these pictures. This is the best we can do. Um, would you like to see them, folks? All righty. <laughs> And in these magazines, I also had the questions like, you know, turn-offs, philosophy of life, what I look for in a woman, you know, that center, yeah. that center sheet they do, I guess, in Playboy magazine all the time. All right, for example, first here is uh, our executive producer, Mr. Fred de Cordova. All right. His... <laughs> 
His philosophy of life, heaven's all right, but hell's got all the best women. <laughs> Favorite movie, the Care Bears get shaved for surgery. <laughs> what I look for in a woman, desperation. <laughs> Favorite dessert, Metamucil cobbler. <laughs> Favorite sport, cross-country breathing. <laughs> Moving along here. Doc Severinsen posed some years ago. <laughs> yes, let me read. <laughs> let, me, let me give you the fact sheet on this man. Turnoffs, women who smell like Al Hurt. <laughs> Historical figure I'd like to meet, Custer's Bugler. <laughs> Least favorite color, Sensible. Proudest accomplishment, once blew high C in a parking meter out of order, socked. <laughs> Pet peeve, licking a stamp and recognizing one of my horses. <laughs> yeah. Now we kid about Tommy. Oh. We kid about Tommy Newsom right all the time, but beneath, beneath that suit. There we go, folks. Oh, okay, let's see what... <laughs> Let's see what it says about him. Nicknames, Tom, Tommy, Thomas, Mr. Newsom. Uh, wildest thing ever done. Once tried to pass off a nine as a six while waiting at Baskin Robbins. <laughs> Favorite comedian, Jack Webb. Favorite fantasy, that someone would die and leave me a top of the line lawnmower in their will. <laughs> Turn-ons, Doc feeling sick, Doc getting sick, sick people breathing on Doc, and Doc pulling a lip hamstring, all right? <laughs> and now... <laughs> and we, you know, in our days, when yes. things weren't going so well, yeah. you pick up a few bucks, right? right? If you've done it in good taste, what the hell's the difference? Here we are with Ed. <laughs> My favorite... Favorite, favorite movie, The Days of Wine and More Wine. <laughs> Biggest gaffe I ever made, ordering red wine with a whaler at Burger King. <laughs> Strangest thing I ever did after a few drinks, stop. <laughs> pet, and pet peeve. And his pet peeve, the breathalyzer balloons don't come in different flavors. I didn't know that. Well, I, uh... Might as well be, become a part of this myself. Here we are, folks. <laughs> and my... <laughs> and my turn-offs are, friends, turn-offs coming home and finding the phone book open to attorneys. <laughs> most frequent saying, I do. <laughs> Historical figure I admire the most, Henry VIII. And what the microphone covers in this picture, the best of Carson. <laughs> that's it. That's it, Mark. So, folks, there we have it. We, we, <laughs> that's the best we can do to rise to the competition. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay where you are with Marty Shaw. I would like to thank the, uh, the Jetter Brothers of General Nightwear. I guess they furnish the uh, pajamas and nightshirts by Botany 500. Wow. Oscar de la Renta. Hey. And Jockey. Yeah. Maybe we should have kept them. I didn't know this was good stuff. <laughs> They're all yours. Now, my first guest, we found out about in, a, I guess, one of the magazines was a story. He is from Hastings, Nebraska, and he kind of had a mission in life when he uh, became the owner of a footless goose. That's right, the goose... I know. That's true. Uh, but after much uh, figuring things out, he fixed it so the footless goose could walk again. <laughs> now, but before we meet Andy, that's the goose, let's meet, let's meet the man who helped him from Hastings, Nebraska, Gene Fleming. <laughs> Gene Fleming. Thanks for being with us tonight. Pleasure. We, we, it's this kind of funny reaction we got from the audience. I say a footless goose, and people, it was kind of, oh, and then they kind of giggle. Uh -huh. 
because it does sound rather amusing at first. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, let's talk about you. You're from Hastings, yep. Nebraska, my, uh, my home state. Yes. What do you do back in uh, Nebraska? Well, I'm in the manufacturing business. So we manufacture livestock handling equipment. In other words, anything to do with the handling of livestock, we build it. Well, you're in the right place for it. We have our, yeah, in the Nebraska, you bet. And we have our own factory and uh, have been in business for 30 years, and things have really went nice for us. Hey, good. Now, how did you come in possession of a, of a footless goose? Well, you see I, what I'm talking about? Uh, these people probably won't believe all this story, but it's true. All right. So help me. But uh, my sister in law at Harvard, Nebraska, gave me 24 ducks to put in my little pond back there mm -hmm. that I already built with a foot deep of water. Right. So I went out after them, and uh, they have a gravel driveway and a gravel yard. And I noticed this one big old goose, they had two of them, was hobbling around forward and backward and uh, sideways. And I said, what's wrong with that goose? They said, well, he was born without feet. And on this gravel, it was like marbled. So he had two yeah. big calluses on these two stumps, see? Oh. And he, he couldn't keep his balance. So uh, I thought, gee, that's too bad. I, I really felt yeah. sorry for him. <laughs> Yeah, that's I really it. felt sorry for him, but so I went back to Hastings with the ducks and turned them loose in a pond, and for a week I couldn't get that goose off my mind. Yeah. So I drove back out there, and I had a couple of uh, brown and white Pomeranians with blue eyes, a pair. Mm -hmm. And I drove into the yard, and I said to my sister-in-law, I said, would you trade that goose for these two geese here? And she said, well, I'd be crazy if I didn't. Yeah. Well, I said, I'll just trade you. Even up, yeah. She said, that's fine. And she she said, wanted to unload the, the goose with no feet. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but uh, she, uh, she, she, she um, traded straight across, see? Yeah. So, so I took this goose back to town, and, uh, and uh, well, I took him back to town first and, and put shoes on him and taught him to walk. Now, wait a second. Now, wait a second. <laughs> see, this, this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> uh, the, we got a box of stuff here. How do you... Where do you go shopping for, uh, for, for goose shoes, I guess? Well, uh, well, folks. Anyway, I taught this, this guy to walk and uh, by putting shoes on him. And then I took these two geese out and traded her straight across. See? Right. And uh, so that's the way it happened. But anyway, uh, the first shoes I put on him was a little pair of genuine leather shoes. Lasted exactly 30 days. And they cost $12.99 a pair. So with my pencil sure. and paper... I figured by the time he is 50 years of age... They live that is, long, huh? Yes. His lifespan, well, I would have $7,800 wrapped up in shoes. That's a, that's a sizable goose shoe yeah, bill. You bet. Uh, and, they, and they probably go through them every 30 days, right? Yeah. Every 30 days. Wow. That's what this amounted to. So, um, you see, he, has, he doesn't have any webs or toes, but he has two stumps, oh. no heel, see? Yeah. And so he, uh, that's what happens. So you kind of have to fill these in with a little... Something to make them more comfortable, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Well, they had to build the heel up, see? In other uh -huh. words, there's, there's no heel in the right foot at all. And so we had to uh, build the heel up. And also, his right, right leg is crooked, so we had to put more sponge rubber on this side and more on this side. To so, balance so him up? Yeah, so it'll set flat-footed, see? How do the other geese uh, uh, tr treat him? I mean, do they well, accept the big, him? Uh... The big white goose, uh, I call him Tyrannus Rex, he attacks him every time he gets near him. It bites him in the hind end and the legs. Knowing that he's uh, has yeah, no feet. Yeah, because he's well. got these shoes on, see? <laughs> <laughs> Something normally geese don't see in the wild, I should point out. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. And so then I bought these. We haven't tried these yet. And yeah. I bought these. And they, uh, I, I never even put them on him because if yeah. these wear out in 30 days, these last about a week, see? Well, that's, uh... So, um... So, uh, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, you want to take a break now, and then we're going to bring out uh, Andy. Uh, but does he seem happy, the, Andy the Goose? Yeah, we, he's happy. Well, what do you got, something? <laughs> well, see, when you take over a uh, goose's life... What do you got here? You really got to look out for him. In other words, he can't stand up on ice. Uh, these he, are ice shoes? Those are ice shoes, see? <laughs> It keeps him from slipping around, too. And, and I suppose an occasional round of golf. And what do we have here? Since Tyrannus Rex is such a tyrant, why well, I, I figured the, uh, this thing out so he could outswim him. So he could outswim him. Because see. geese do move through the water with you betcha. by paddling their feet uh -huh. this way. So he's got a couple of little yeah. uh, flippers here. Yeah. And, these are just what? Are these? Well, uh, that is a pair. Uh, 
I, I didn't tell you that, uh, you that, have little, that uh, last spring, uh, uh, Andy's wife couldn't, she just couldn't, and he couldn't. Oh. Uh, couldn't what? Couldn't uh, mate. Ah. They couldn't make love, see? Oh. Because these two stumps, he kept slipping off. He couldn't hang on. <laughs> They, they tried, and she laid eggs and sat on them for months and months and months, and nothing happened. Oh. So finally, a duck had baby ducks next door, and she adopted those baby ducks as her own, and the old duck went off and had more eggs and more babies. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, but yeah. see, in other words, with this 12 inches of water, I've been reading up on this. Right. And, and with these shoes on, I believe that, she'll, that he'll be able to hang on to her. Don't you? Let's let's all hope so. I think yes. That's, I think that would that would yeah. about do it. Well, he's three years he's three years old. And he's never been a papa yet. Ah. Wow. Is this that time now to meet? Well, Gene, I think we've uh, we've given Andy a big enough build up. Shall we uh, have Andy come out here? Most geese pigeon toed? I mean, well, he, now, she was towing in a little bit. Well, that was on purpose. You yeah. see, by putting the padding in, you had to put the padding in as you put the shoes on. Yeah. Well, I showed you those uh, love shoes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's for a reason. In other words, uh, like, a, oh, like, a, like a cowboy on a horse. Well, she looks very comfortable, doesn't he? Well, he is comfortable. Uh, okay, now we, uh, why don't we bring out the tank here? All right. Now we can see Andy can walk. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Andy will swim for us, right? Okay. Okay. That's all right. Andy's just fine, folks. <laughs> That's all right. Andy's perfect. Andy's just... That's all right, Andy. All righty. Now, Andy? <laughs> That doesn't hurt her. These people are going, oh, but that doesn't, that doesn't hurt the goose, right? No. Uh -oh. oh, all right. No, he loves people. Would she rather not get in the water, you think? Oh, I think he will. All right, it's not necessary. We don't want to... Yeah. Okay, let's go swimming. <laughs> Come on, boy. Jump in. Well, there you are, folks. Well, <laughs> Andy's a nice... Well, Andy, <laughs> what, what more can we say, folks? I mean, there you have it. Good night. Thank you for coming. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> All right, folks, how do you follow? Well, what a spot. What a nice spot for my next guest. People don't like to follow animals, but... Marty Short is a very funny and talented actor. He's starring in a movie called Three Fugitives, which opened last Friday. He's doing great. Would you welcome Martin Short? Tell me this is not the goose. I, I, no, well, it's a gift for you. You're I mean, kidding. I can't come empty here. Are you serious? Absolutely open this thing. Please. No, what's what's going to happen with well, it? Well, it's just, you know, it's. Oh. <laughs> I that no goose one. didn't deliver. Oh, you see? And look, what's great is he can bounce like this. <laughs> You are <laughs> perverse. Thank you. I had no. I took a. I took a crazy guess. I didn't know what was going well, on. It's uh, <laughs> nice to see you. It's great. It's uh, you know, John. It's great to be here. As David Steinberg would say, <laughs> it's so great to be here, John. <laughs> oh, Always exciting to see you and Ed, and of course my dear friend, Doc. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, David Seinberg was yeah. on the show a week ago, and we started talking about you doing him. <laughs> he got hysterical. He loved it. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. I, anyway, uh, you want to talk about this picture first? No, you know, it's it's odd. You I, know, when you're I was preparing... looking at this, and I, I said to Fred, I said, who is this in the picture? No, I just, I brought this, I was just leaving you. You're preparing to do what, what to talk about. And I realized that the last time I was here, I was talking about my childhood. Yeah. And me performing in the attic, the Martin Short Show, and things like that. Sad things, really, that are best kept to a psychiatric couch. I chose to talk about it here. So I right. saw this, and I just wanted to prove to the world that it hasn't just been about looks. Yeah, this is you as a This youngster. is me at 13 in the beach. And these are your... Uh, these are my parents. Are your parents. Yeah. And there was a weight problem that seemed... I, you look a little a little flabby around the... Uh, yes. Around the center there. there there's, there's a definite... Uh... Go in and take a, take a close look. <laughs> now, what? Uh, how old were and you? What's, what's, what's bothersome is this part here... Yeah? People think is my behind. And no. that isn't... That's what that, I see. Yeah, because then it would be like. That's you know, the shadow, right? No, that would be like Roseanne Barr's brother. No, this yeah. is this is. No, I kid. I love Roseanne Barr. Yeah. Why would you do a Roseanne Barr joke when it's so <laughs> easy to do? <laughs> yeah. So. Yes, sir. Have you been a crazy person? You've done. Now you did Saturday Night Live. Yes. Sir. You've done uh, other things. You got motion pictures now. What's your worst job you ever had? I find that more fascinating than people's successes. Oh, I've had a... I've truthfully had a... Were you embarrassed? You know, really... Oh, it's been a career. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a string. I, you know, because in Canada, for seven years I worked... Second City, Second yes. City Television. But, yes, that was the good part. But, you good know, stuff, I, I did yeah. a show called Right On. In 1973, it was like a rock and roll show oh, where right. I would sing the top 40s, but I had no funk. Was that just in Canada? Just in Canada, live on the CBC, and it was at five o'clock, and I had long hair, but I couldn't sing rock and roll, but I tried to, but it was more like, you know, Sinatra singing, you know. Right. I shot the sheriff, <laughs> however, I did not shoot the deputy, ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> and, uh, it's like a marching band trying oh, to play. Oh, it was frightening, frighteningly <laughs> bad. I mean, so, it was like, Kate Smith sings the best of the Stones. You know, there was no soul. And you know then, you used to do that in their old show? Ed Sullivan, in the early days, would bring on opera stars <laughs> because he wanted to put, and they would try to sing the current hit of the day, oh, and yeah. it never ca came uh, off. Um, Fries. Well, they'd have, they'd have, they'd have Helen Traubel yes. coming out singing yeah. whatever the hit she song. Loves you, 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 you. <laughs> and my parents would sit there and say, you know, you see, now that's the way it should be sung. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, you know, fix the, uh, yeah. one more drink, Dad. So, but yeah. uh, then, I, of course, then I, you know, you do see that I did industrial shows. I would do the Spirit of Chrysler, seventy-five. You know, and they spend <laughs> thousands of th <laughs> well, I could say millions, but I'd be exaggerating. Yeah. thousands of dollars. To promote on, the new product, and you yes, go. each year they would a huge Chrysler show, and performers. If you were, like, usually you'd be doing stage, you're getting yeah. three hundred dollars, but the Chrysler sh industrial show yeah. would pay you a thousand dollars a week. A so you'd come money. out, you know, there'd be a car coming out and dry ice. And you'd be going, I'd rather be a fury than a Ford. <laughs> yes, I would. You bet I won't. You know? and, uh... <laughs> and they thought that was great. Oh, yeah. yes. So you're laughing. No. Oh. The audience is laughing, but the people on those industrial shows, the higher-ups, they think that stuff is great. Oh, fantastic. And the only catch is you'd have to go to the cocktail parties afterwards, oh. and then there'd be, you know, Miss Rum and Coke, and she'd be in a little... <laughs> well, that would be long, really, and, and she... And then you'd go up, and then there'd be, like, you know, the guys, you know, the corporate... <laughs> now, you're saying to me that, uh, how do you learn all the words? You know, and, uh... uh well, that would be the... <laughs> but the worst in a long string was a pilot I did. Well, you know, I must tell you that I was also on the, a Danny Thomas show called uh, I'm a Big Girl Now. I don't remember that. Yeah, it was not a huge mm -hmm. hit. I played Neil Stryker, the office boy. and uh, But Danny taught me a spit take. <coughs> oh, sure. The only, although I maintained my spit take. You see, Danny's is more like, you know, oh, I can't do that. No, you can do it. We can do whatever you want. No. But, uh, you know, Danny's is more like, say to me, Uncle Tanous will be here in a week. Right. Uncle Tanous will be here in a week. A week? week? Right. <laughs> okay. Mine is, was a variation of that. Say to me, Uncle Tanous is coming for two weeks. Uncle Tanous is coming for two weeks. Two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, uh... I thought... 
I thought. Then you said one week. <laughs> 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 this is this, this is like that That's decision. It's a slow roll. It's slow roll. You just have and yet, to... this doesn't go away. That's right. <laughs> this is show business. Freddie keeps uh, uh, doing this. Yeah, after all, you know, you, you, we want to mention uh, the fugitives, three yes, fugitives, with three, Nick Nolte. Yes, three fugitives. I saw a, a clip on this. You get beaten to death by Nolte. Yeah. Oh, well, Nick can be very rough. Yeah, he drags you around, and he's pulling you and hitting Take you. Come on, Marty. It's just football. Let's do another thing. <laughs> what are we going to see in this clip? We... He comes in, yeah. Yes. Oh. Absolutely. I, 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 I come in, I'm robbing a bank, I'm totally incompetent, and Nick is there, a bank robber who's reformed, determined to go straight, but I come in... To hold up the bank. Hold up the bank, and I'm not that good at it. What's, as they say, the monitor? Somebody says that. Everybody! Oh, hands up! Hands up! Stick them up! This is a hold up! I said stick them up! <laughs> you see this? Do you know what this is? It's a grenade! And I'm pulling the pin, so no funny business. Oh. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, the lucky take. That's funny. The spit take, huh? The double, the two weeks. Who yes, gets? but I don't want to lose my dignity. You'll let me know when I do. Yeah. No, you haven't. No, you haven't gone overboard at all. All right. We have certain standards less on this is show. More. That's right. We'll do this. We're coming right back. <laughs> <laughs> my next guest. <laughs> a little dignity now. Yes. You, want, you want a dignity oh, on the show? We'll bring you dignity. dignity. Here's a charming lady. She was uh, raised in France and Italy. She's the daughter of Italian director Roberto Rossellini and Ingrid Bergman. She's currently starring in Cousins, which is a romantic comedy. Comes out February the 10th. Would you welcome, please, Isabella Rossellini? <laughs> nice to see you again. I have to sit on the corner. I know. Isn't this? Oh, you know. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait. I could say something. Here's a, Here we go. Isn't it nice to be on a classy show? <laughs> yeah. You're following a handicapped goose and a crazy man. <laughs> what a show. How are you? I'm fine. You're just here on one of those nights. Everything is just kind of silly. Yes, it's very crazy. <laughs> See, now I was trying to be very continental, knowing that you were raised in France and Italy when you came out. I've always assumed that you do, when, you, when you kiss a lady's hand, you, you bring the hand to the lips, or do you take the lips to the hand? What is that? <laughs> I've never been sure No, of that. you take the lips to the hand. You go, I yes. see. And you don't really put your lips on the hand. Oh, you just, don't? No, no, you don't. What would you say? It's more like... Right, like that. Ah. Perfect. <laughs> well, we in this country, now you just give Marty a kiss when you came out. Do you think we overdo it here a little bit of that? Oh, no, we kissed twice in yes. Europe. Yes. So why is that? I don't know. Just we just, yes, I don't know. We just kiss both, both cheeks. Yeah. I spent a, a little time in Italy, and I made the mistake that a lot of people do when they travel. You try to learn the language. You know. Oh. And then you go over and there and you feel hard. like you feel well, you feel like such an idiot. But in Italy you can use your hands a little bit. They do, they? don't they? They're very Yes. Yeah. You, do you know a few jazz? Because they are precise. I know uh, some gestures, gestures, but I don't think uh, they would <laughs> <laughs> Some are obscene. Some you know? are a little bit, I think, very, very But uh, this is always a question, you know. The Italian, Italian this is always a question. You how are you? How are uh, you? you know, know, like <laughs> yeah, anything. Where do you live? You know, that is always a question. No, if I say I like something, it's question me PH? Questo mi piace. Questo mi piace. Well if it's something good that you eat, you go like that. Really? Uh huh. That means something good. That's good. Yes, this that's is, good. What is the? No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it means just exactly what it, what it looks like, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now you have a, you have a four-year-old. Uh, no, she's five. Five now. now. Mm -hmm. now do you do you raise her uh, more or less by uh, the standards of uh, European standards or yes, continental or? Yes. Kind of both. Yeah. You know, she goes to a bilingual school, and I uh, we speak. I try to teach her different languages, so. We speak a lot of different languages at home, but what happens is that we mix them all, so she speaks a language that sometimes is kind of very mixed. Yeah. She would be understood, not she wouldn't be understood in any country, you know. But that's a wonderful <laughs> thing. You no, know, because, because uh, children are so adaptive. I think when, when adults get scared and we're afraid to be foolish, I think that's why we don't want to learn a language. You go over mm -hmm. and you try it, and you're not quite right, and we feel embarrassed. But I understand when foreigners come here, they don't feel embarrassed if they're trying English. People like to help. You know? Yes, no, yes, that's true. Some countries, no. Well, no, no, English, everybody speaks English, kind yeah. of, something. Yeah. So, Cousins, tell me a little bit about Cousins. 
Well, Cousins, um, well, it's a film that I liked a lot. Yeah. It's a comedy for a change, because I've been accused to do dark films, so this time yes, I Yes, well, you've done a few. Yes. What you call it dark films. <laughs> so, you like, like, do you find comedy, comedy is not, is not easy, is it? No, but I didn't play, like, comedy like you do. Because, you know, you it's a comedy on? the can't <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, she, she plays it out, a little really? larger than life. I like to keep it to the best. <laughs> very, very, very restricted, low key. Yeah. You no know, cowardice type of stuff. <laughs> yeah. No uh, coward We have a little clip here, do we not, Fred? What do you mean, no? I think Did I catch you in the middle of a sip there? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Say it right. No, Fred went, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes, oh, it's all right. If we the clip, we'd be running into the David Letterman show, and we mustn't do that. Well, David could go late, couldn't he? <laughs> this just bumped the schedule up. Chat Put Bob Costas on about two in the morning. I mean... <laughs> Right? Huh. Hey, how are you? <laughs> you were here on a crazy night. Thank you for being here. Thank you I hope Cousins much. goes very, very well for you. And three fugitives? Fugitives. Just fugitives. Yes, I was three fugitives. I was thinking of three amigos. This is just fugitives. No, this is three fugitives. Oh, it is. <laughs> and my next woman is... That's right. Three Trojan women is the next film. That's right. <laughs> You're on a roll. Anyway, thank you for being here to, uh, tonight. And... Uh, Tomorrow night, Jay Leno's going to join us, and from Wonder Years, Fred Savage, and we have uh, magician Brian Gillis. Is the band going to play a number? Are you going to do a monologue? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. 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 <laughs> I'm humbled by that applause. <laughs>